Hey guys, Trickshot726 here, and I am back today with a action figure review for the new Build-A-Figure Crimson Dynamo figure for the Black Widow movie Wave. Um, so I was lucky enough to get my hands on this figure not too long ago. I hope everyone's staying safe and staying inside right now. Uh, but I wanted to do a review on this one because I know a lot of other people are doing reviews on the rest of the Wave and stuff, but this is the one figure that I wanted to talk about because it's the one I was probably most excited about from the Wave. So with that, let's just jump right into it. All right, so right away we can tell this is a big figure, which I really like. I know there's been a couple of different characters who've been the Crimson Dynamo in the comics in the past, um, and they've all come in different shapes and sizes. But when I think of the Crimson Dynamo, I kind of think of the um, Iron Man Armored Adventures movie, or not movie, TV show one, or the uh, Avengers, or Smitey's Heroes TV show, uh, where he was in like this big bulky armor. And to me, that's what kind of sets him apart from a lot of the other Iron Man villains that are just people in knockoff Iron Man armors that he's kind of like in a bigger bulkier armor. For this figure uh, the basically the upper torso the head uh, torso and arms are all brand new sculpt hands too and then the lower torso is the same as the uh, Ironmonger uh, build a figure that came out for the Iron Man 3 wave back in like 2013. It's been reused for the uh, Mandroid build a figure and I feel like there's another figure that had these same legs as well. I can't think of it off the top of my head and I don't know if I have that figure, that other figure in my uh, collection at all right now. But so the legs are reused. They've certainly got some mileage out of them now. Uh, they're like seven years old. But the rest of this build a figure is brand new sculpt as far as I can tell. Because the lower abdomen, belt, all that stuff has been like sculpted for this figure. With the head, zoom right in on there. You can tell he's got a, his like visor, his faceplate, that kind of thing. And then his neck, which I also think is really cool because this is not on the other two figures. It's on a ball joint on the bottom of the neck and then at the head is on one at the top as well. So you get a lot more range of motion like that than you would have with the Mandroid or the Ironmonger. The Mandroid head barely moves at all. It's like hard to get anything going on in there. But this one you get a lot more uh, dynamic poses and action with that head. So that is really cool. I appreciate that right off the top. Um, this piece came separately. I didn't build it. I already had it built. So sorry you guys didn't get to see how it's built but this came separately from the rest of the figure and it's like his booster jetpack whatever um but i don't know adds another level of bulk to the figure um and it's colored too i have the iron manga one right here uh his is obviously different it was all just the marbleized blue back then we did not get it painted at all so i had to go through and do some touch-ups with like the black and the red and the silver in uh, some key parts just to give him a little bit more flavor than he had before. So you can see there's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two of them right there. But I do like that this one does have a little bit more color in it. Um, I'll probably go over mine and add a little bit more touch-ups and black wash and silver wash over it just to give him a little bit more of that rusted, worn, used look. So then for the shoulder pads, these uh, also came removed and separate so you can take those off. They line up uh to help with the star pattern right here um he looks really gross without these on i haven't really looked at him without them on too much but that's nasty those just plug right in right there um and since they are removable uh, you can usually unplug one peg at a time if you need to to access articulation um so i don't feel like it gets in the way too much but also he's a big dude he's not gonna be doing flips and stuff but yeah so you can see the armor pieces line up right here with his star to try and kind of like finish that star emblem which I like a lot. I know it's just part of that look but I don't know it works for me. Um, this one's got like these rivets shoulder rocket things on the top I'm not sure what. You can shoot stuff out of there and then the arms actually I'm going to take this off again just so we can get a better look at the arms. These are also brand new metal sculpted. Um, it's like that marbly plastic they've been using but it works really well here. Um, I feel like with when they did stuff with the Ironmonger wave way back when they were testing out with that, it had a lot more of the marbleization stuff in it, uh, which, I don't know, it didn't work as much, but I feel like they fine-tuned it to the point here where you get a little bit in there, but it's just enough to give it like that little a sheen, but like it doesn't look like it's a crazy marble cake 
or anything like that. So uh, it's gotten a lot better. But then what I really like with this figure is for the arms, you can see these, it's got these, uh, hang on, focus, there we go. Uh, these blue translucent things, like tubes on the arm. I feel like it's part like power source or something like that, part of his ammo, firepower, whatever you want to call it. But those look really good. Um, he's got them on both arms, so I really like those a lot. I wish they did a little bit more with those. Um, like on the fists, there's no paint apps right here in these lines. I wish they kind of uh, either filled those in with black or the orange or the blue or something like that just to tie it in a little bit more. Uh, just a personal preference. I kind of get why they didn't because they want to save on costs, but whatever. I, I still think we could have gotten that a little bit more. Anyway, so that's what we got for the arms. And then um, talked about the back. You can see right here in the lower back, it's got like, I don't know, is that where the dude climbs in? Like you just open those up and go right in the butt. Who knows? But that's what we've got for the, uh, the look and the sculpt of the figure. Okay, so for the articulation, it's pretty standard Marvel Legends articulation for like a big build a figure. Pretty similar to the Mandroid and the Ironmonger figures that we got in the past. Uh, the difference being mainly the head, which I talked about already, where it's on that ball joint at the bottom of the neck and then um, at the top as well. So you get a lot more movement and range of motion up there. Uh, the second big difference is that with the forearms, uh, they cut them a lot better. So you get more range. It's not a lot range, but when you compare it to these his this figure with his stumpy little arms that didn't even have like bicep swivel um <laughs> it's a, i like the figure but looking at it right now with his little arms in comparison it's very sad but that's the other big difference they've done with it is uh you get a little bit more range you actually get around 90 now with um both of the arms which is about kind of what i'd expect with this guy i wouldn't expect him to have a lot more but with the arms uh, they can go up to about here. The You can see the shoulder pads are made to swivel and get out of the way of that a little bit. Uh, they can go forward about here without unlocking the front or the back and about there. Oh, you can hear it just popped out a little bit um, without messing anything up. So it's not at the most, but like I mentioned before, you can pop it off if you want to get him punching super far forward or something like that. And you can work around the shoulder pad to make sure you can still see his face while he's doing that. And it's, you can see it's unplugged right there, but you can still get more range of motion out of him if you want to, um, since those shoulder pads plug in and out pretty easily. Without those on, you can see he does, he can do the full 360 and he's got bicep swivel as well. The single jointed elbows, wrist rotation swivel, that kind of basic Marvel Legends stuff. And then you can see at the torso he's got um, a ball joint there where he can swivel on that i think for bigger figures like this i kind of prefer when they do that as opposed to the ab crunch just because you get a lot more range and a lot of times you get just as much uh, you get a decent amount of crunch forward and then a good amount of uh movement back as well so if you wanted to get him flying um you could do that as well since he's got this giant jet pack on there and then the legs are pretty standard as well. Move forward that much. Uh, kick back, eh, decent amount. Uh, upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees that get to about 90. Um, and then the legs, he's got, or the ankles, he's got a articulation that go up and down. And he's got some ankle pivot, but it's not the greatest. You can see he goes to about, he can do a decent amount of splits, but the legs are so big that you can't really move them around that much. All right, and here he is next to the only other Marvel Legend Crimson Dynamo that we have. As you can tell, very different design between the two of these. This one came with the Iron Man 2 concept series, I believe. So it's a little bit short for Marvel Legends as well, um, compared to like modern ones where you've got Blizzard here. Eh, no, he's about the same size. Um, but it's a lot smaller of an armor and comp more compact. Um, I know this is more of a traditional Crimson Dynamo design, I feel like, that most people think of. Um, but I definitely prefer this big guy over this one, just because I feel like he has a lot more presence and uh, stands out a little bit more, in my opinion. Um, this one I also did do some paint on just to make it stand out. All of this was red up here, save for the uh, chest piece right there. Pretty good figure. I enjoy this one a lot as well. 
but I do feel like this one is much superior, in my opinion. All right, and here he is next to a couple of other Iron Man villains that I have. I've got Blizzard, Spymaster from this wave right here, Living Laser, and Titanium Man. This is from the Iron Man 1 or 2 concept series as well. It's a other really old figure, so it's not like a comic based. It's based off of the video game. For the, I think it's for the first Iron Man movie is what he's based off of. I know there was like one other Titanium Man figure that came out with the Iron Man 2 wave um, way back in like 2010. I think he fits in well with the other Iron Man villains and he stands out a little bit being a bigger, bulkier dude. So I really like that look for him. And here he is next to a couple of comic Iron Mans that I have. Um, we've got the all new, all different, the classic, and the extremist armor. This one we definitely need a uh, redo on because it is tiny in comparison to these other two. Um, I feel like it works with uh, Dynamo on its own just because it uh, definitely makes Dynamo look even bigger than he is. But uh, in comparison to other Marvel Legends and then also just the articulation scheme on that figure, it's definitely lacking um, by today's standards. So there he is next to those. I feel like he fits in really well, um, especially for the vibe that they were going for of having a bigger, bulkier dude. And as you can tell, that armor is a little bit shorter. Um, so I feel like it doesn't work with those armors as well as this one does. All right, guys, but that is it for my Crimson Dynamo Build-A-Figure review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I definitely recommend getting this figure if you have a chance. It is big, bulky, great. I love it. Um, I definitely want to do some videos with him fighting Iron Man, wrecking everything. Uh, so, and it's the perfect time for that right now as well because I uh, can't go anywhere. So let me know what you guys think as well. I know I haven't done that many reviews in the past, so let me know if you want me to continue doing them. If you guys have any suggestions, figures you'd like to see, or any uh, advice on how to do these better as well, I'd love to hear that. Um, but I'm going to be getting out of here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go play Animal Crossing or something like that. I will see you guys later. Bye!